Oh, new hello. Mate. Hello. 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 Hey, gamers. Hi, gamers. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, where we talk about all things Dungeon Selects. Tagline is still in pro progress, as you can tell. We um, talk about dungies. We talk about no. dungies and the selection of them. Do not. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> that, that, that one is going dragoons. in the bin. No. Why? That one's immediately in the bin. I what hate the fuck? it. That's fucked mm -mm. up. No. That's, that's shit. <laughs> Next. very hostile today, and I don't appreciate it. Dracons <laughs> and dungarees. Like about using you as a weapon. But, yeah, you, know. you did. Multiple times. He just, like, for some reason. Okay, guys. <laughs> for some reason, me and Bella have been talking like, frequently about, like, just... How funny it would be if we would like meet up and just get drunk together. It'd be fucking hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. And for some reason, this image just like lives rent free in my head of me like, because Bella's fucking tiny, just picking her up and just swinging her around like a fucking bat. I don't know why, but that imagery just lives I, in my head. I debated it when we met up, and I was like, I don't want to break her. But we did sword fight <laughs> with Bell's crutches. We did. Nice. Like full on like. See, I want a sword fight, hotel. but I want to use Bell as a sword. You know what I mean? It's fucking funny. I would be like. <laughs> Like, I, for some reason, that imagery just, like, lives rent free in my head. I just have away. vivid fucking memories of me and Bell Soul fighting and Sassy being like, No! No! No fighting! <laughs> oh, fuck. It was great. Just come to the next LS we'll meetup. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, as if we're ever going to have one more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I would love to. I'll, I mean, to be fair, I'll be in the UK this summer, so I might be able to Hell yeah. meet up with some I'm gamers. I'm going to come and collect on all those sexual promises. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my, my girlfriend. That was like, not how I anticipated that that sentence. I think <laughs> my girlfriend lives like ten minutes away from Heathrow, so you know the gamers are in the neighborhood and want to hang out. It's not too big of a drive away. Hell yeah. Uh, I mean, we already, we, we already like said in summer we're going we're me. going to make the drive up to you, Ethan. But that's something that we already. That, I mean, that's a terrible decision, but cool. No, because I want to eat. I want to eat those fucking garlic knots, dude. That's the only reason I'm coming. <laughs> Get a fucking hotel in fucking Halifax so that we can order from my local place that's just outside of Halifax. Yes, that's like a great. Literally, idea. only because they do like garlic dobles coated in pizza sauce, coated in cheese, and then baked in a lasagna that's, dish. Doesn't that sound? Ooh, fuck, I'm coming. That, sound that sounds amazing? delicious. Right? It's oh, honestly the best thing. Like. Like, it sounds so, like you've sent me pictures of that shit. And I'm just like, dude, that looks like a lasagna, but it's fucking garlic knots instead of pasta. Fuck it's yes. It's so good. Hell yeah. I, I'm in. Up. I want I to go. You can come, Bell. Hell yeah. Pog. And then, we can actually, yeah. Like, then I can use you as a fucking weapon. We can do all that. Yeah. Go. Let's go. I'm going to bash you on top of Ethan's fucking <laughs> skull. Get an Airbnb with a kitchen so I can cook for everyone. Oh. Hey, don't make promises like that, bro, because we're going to fucking make that happen. I will turn up. Fucking I cinnamon, cinnamon toast. I just booked a, a day off work for fucking um, for Blood Hunt. You think I won't book a day off work to come over and cook? True. Hell yeah. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. You and Kaza both cook because she works at a restaurant. And we can have a cook. You guys can have a cook off. And me and Bella <gasps> will be the judges. We could either have a cook off or me and Kaza can That's work together and design idea. a menu. No, no, no. Cook off because then me and Bella could eat double the food. Yeah. You get to eat double the food anyway. As long as I get to eat, I'm there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fun. Like, as long as I get to eat, I'm, I'm happy. I do love a good competition. Right? Yeah. I don't want to ruin my friendship with Kaza by being incredibly competitive. That's think, part that, of a good competition. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> what? Just turning the heat up on the stove when she's not looking so that her steaks, like, burns on the outside. That's fucked or up. Or is overcooked. That's fucked up. You gotta stream that cook-off so we can watch. <laughs> I mean, at some point, like, when I have a free house, because I've got a lot of room downstairs, <laughs> I want to do, like, a cooking stream. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, that sounds fucking pog. Um, alright, anyway. Um, D &D. Discourse. Discourse, D &D. right? We have a lot of questions that got submitted, so I think that's going to be the primary focus of today's episode. I'm just going to answer those I questions, because there's all of them. Because there's so many questions, I actually made notes. My boy. You did. I did. Um, I did. Also, I want to quickly thank everybody for being so lovely on my birthday. Ethan... Thank you for the gifts, homie. I look at this fucking D20, dude. It's fucking massive. It's, it's a chunky sick. boy. And the shirt's fucking dope as well. It's in my closet, so I'm not gonna go grab have it. You, but have it's you cool. rolled your dice yet? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, I just rolled the natural one with, one with it. So pog. <laughs> um, <laughs> the cool. curse. It worked. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna use it exclusively on enemies that like 
hit you and eventually Ooh. i'll get good rolls you know what i mean like eventually what was that that was a 15 so that's pretty good you know that, was... that beats my ac without modifiers there you go there you go um but yeah my birthday was great i'm gonna do a subathon type thing on saturday um, of which i'll post like a proper announcement uh in my discord uh later it's not gonna be very fucking massive just like a little a little, a little, a little something something a little, a little a little bit of spice you know but uh yeah any other announcements? Uh, there will be a DS this uh, Sunday. There won't be one the week after because it's Easter. Um, this Sunday we have the entire gang minus Soko, I believe. So that's good. Good shit. Good shit. Soko won't be here for the next like three weeks. So you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. But well, you know, we'll miss him. But also, you know, we'll be really it's Easter you know anyway. I mean? So, so it's not like we're gonna miss loads and loads that we wouldn't have already. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so, last episode, y'all traveled to Lake Udina and uh, got introduced to the um, the community of Triton there uh, and got given permission to study medicine under Fairy, the healer of that tribe, and got a lot of information about the whereabouts of the uh, Tear of Kasuth and also the beast in the lake, and what truly happened to uh, Sir Oliver uh, and that, like, month gap he has in his memory. And Kess also learned a thing or two about a certain affliction that uh, seems to be... Uh, has surfaced in her dad, but also just seems to be a, a like, a air elemental specific thing. Um, which, to which, like... Not much has been learned, except for the fact that it's something that really only affects elementals uh, from the air, plane of air specifically, and that basically any air elemental being is born with it in their system. It's just a matter of if, whether it actually surfaces or not. Um, there's, a, there's a lot more, like, intricacies and all that, but we'll, uh, we'll discuss that when more of that gets uh, revealed in campaign. Um, so what are you guys, what are you guys' thoughts on just the last episode in general? I mean, player-wise, I fucking loved it. Character-wise, Brooks is like, I don't know what the fuck's going on at this point. I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> I love it. I'm super excited. <laughs> it's, this shit's going crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> for it. Okay. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I talked a bit about uh, to, uh, to to Bell about the way the writing has been for the campaign because I can definitely understand that it might seem a little overwhelming because you have so many like different things going on at the same time. But the way I kind of yeah. wrote the campaign and I'm right and my my writing style is very much open world RPG like you have a quest log that just like gathers up quests as you travel and it's up to you whether or not you want to do them and and when and and stuff. So it I, I definitely get like. You know, you got fucking pirate stuff going on. You got that fucking, like, now that disease that you throw for Kess's dad that might lead to something. You've got the whole, like, Kosuf quest line. You've got, like, Koiba stuff going on. All like, all kind of, like, got introduced to you simultaneously. But it's very much, the writing style is very, very much in, like, the style of, say, a Witcher or a Skyrim, where you're just traveling and you're gathering all these quests and plot hooks, and it's up to you when and where you feel like actually following up on them. That's kind of the way I've 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 been designing, uh, for two reasons. One, to avoid making the campaign feel very linear. And two, to really give you guys that sense of freedom of deciding or really deciding what your adventure is going to be and where you're going, and really get, feel make guys feel like you're in control of where your adventure takes you. Those, those are two main reasons why the writing style and the amount of, like, quests, for lack of a better term, you have, seem so vastly different from campaign one. Uh, that's just kind of my... Um, my reasoning for it all. Uh, and I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's the idea that D&D &D is a living, breathing world and that yeah. just because you're not there, things don't stand still yeah yeah that's definitely uh, that's something that i also 
I, I mean, I did do that in campaign one, but like, I'm, I just writing wise, I wanted to ca campaign two to really feel like a, a choose your adventure type thing where you really, yeah, like, you have all these plot hooks, you have all this potential and places where you could go for stuff, and it's really up to you guys what you do campaign and what one, order you do it. Obviously, there were things that we left and came back and they changed, but there was very like pressing matters that we as a group had to go and sort. Whereas this, like, I definitely feel like at some point there is going to be. A moment where we as a group have a choice of like we can do one thing or the other thing whichever one we do the other one won't happen because they're both time constrained yeah. and we as a group have to decide who do we want on our good side who do we want potentially pissed off at us and yeah and like the consequences of of that are then yours to deal with kind of kind of thing yeah definitely definitely for sure for sure D and D <clears throat> D and D guys am I uh... right? <laughs> One thing that I really, like, enjoy, and that's also the reason why I have you both here, is because it, as far as, like, inter-party relationships go, the relationship between Kess and Brooks is always an interesting <laughs> one, but it's also, yeah. like, it's it's evolved a lot, and I kind of wanted to take today to kind of zoom in on that. <laughs> um, oh. So I want to just kind of ask you both to kind of... How do you see things, and how do you view the developments, and... What do you think will happen between you two in the, in the, in the long term kind of thing? Oh, God. Um, I mean, I feel like Kess and Brooks have this really weird relationship, but also, like, as characters. Me and Belle did a lot of character writing, not together and not interlinked, but very, like, side by side. Like, we'd both be hanging out while we were writing stuff. And we both made these characters that have, like, two very, like, vastly different backgrounds. And, like, obviously there's secrets that, like, we both don't know about each other and stuff like that. But, like, we made these characters that are so different. And then every now and again we find something and we're like, why are they the same person? <laughs> <That's> so <simple. laughs> like, there's, like, so many things that's, like, wildly different from one another. Like, you know, like, stable homes versus unstable homes and and their attitudes towards stuff. And then they end up, like, both, like, hey, we're the stupid idiot. <laughs> like yeah. it, it obviously is more complicated than that but like there are like so many things that like so Kess will do something and I'm like huh I didn't expect anyone other than Brooks would be like that response to that individual thing um regarding them two with each other I think it, it's very sort of this like it's, it's very complicated between the two of them, and I think it's very complicated by the fact that they are both inherently, at least to some extent, selfish and manipulative people. You know, and they're both sort of pushing to try and have this upper hand, both with each other and with everyone else in the group. There's this underlying tone of, like, like, even with Kess's secret, she's like, I'm going to tell you a secret but I want you to tell me something back. I don't want you to have a secret over me. You know, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like it is a great way for them to build trust, but also is a sense of like, nobody re really has a stronger position than the other. Nobody can turn around and be like, well, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to tell the party yada yada because the other person will be like, well, fuck you. I'll tell the party yada yada. <laughs> In and, mutual destruction. Yeah, and you have two very untrusting characters that have someone that they sort of know they can dump shit on because they fucked themselves into a corner. Like, it's mutually assured destruction, exactly. Like, you know, Brooks has something comes up, he's like, oh, fuck, I can't tell the party. I could tell Cass because I know that she can't tell on me, <laughs> which creates this really weird dynamic where they don't really trust anyone, but at the same time, they kind of trust each other. Yeah, they trust each other, but it's, like, less of an inherent, like, I trust you because I know you're a good person, and more of, like, I know that I could fuck you over, and I know that you know that, so therefore we're in it together by a process of get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, you could tell Diagon she can't tell on you. True. That <laughs> is, again, true. Yeah, like, it's why Brooks is more comfortable <laughs> around Diagon, because he's like, Diagon can only tell Cass. Yeah. <laughs> and Kes probably already knows. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I totally agree. I think they're both inherently selfish people. Um, but I also, it's also really interesting because they have basically the same complexes, but they've come <laughs> out in such wildly different scenarios that it's insane. And like, 
I mean, a perfect example from just like this session was like Kes getting real bad at Brooks for being like, oh, why do you care if I hurt myself? It doesn't hurt you. And then also having the same kind of reaction to you might have a genetic illness. And she's like, ah, it's fine. It's not going to bother anyone else. It's only something I deal with. <laughs> so like it's it's this oh weird. <laughs> You're both fucking hypocrites. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy. wild. Now, what I like, what I when I look at you two characters wise, I mean, uh, I see two people that are very selfish, but also kind of like over time. And what I can see you kind of developing as we move forward is like this, this like genuine care for each other. But neither one of you is ever going to fucking be willing to admit that you care about each other. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they never admit it. I think it's one of those where, like, someone's going to do something stupid that forces the other person into a corner. Like, Kess has underhandedly admitted that she cares for Brooks by being really upset about what he did. But that was never his intent or her intent. It was simply he did something fucking stupid. And she's like, what she the fuck is the wrong fuck? with you? <laughs> and has sort of played away that hand. Yeah, but also, like, for instance, when you got when, when Brooks got stabbed. And yeah, like, yeah. Like that Kes, was so Kes long was the ago. one who was the most vocal about her concern, and like was Kes the most unvocal like, about her relief when when you were patched up, right? It's what really struck me is that for a long time Brooks didn't know that Kess stayed next to him when he was unconscious, because Brooks didn't find that out for like a long time, and, and he then Kess just mentioned it. it. She just, like, kind of, like, mentioned it in an offhand, kind of, like, it was just, like, this time, and he's like, you did what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Back up. It's, it's, it's weird. I think it's, like, one of those, if they, if they ever get to the point where they kind of, like, and, like, tell the other person, or, and the other person acknowledges it, it will be a case of they tell each other, and then they ignore it until it absolutely has to be acknowledged again. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be a case of, like, you're an idiot. I don't want you to do that. I care about you. Cool. We're not going to speak for a week. That's character development, baby. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> eventually, a year from now, we'll be able to. We'll have you guys sitting in a room together and actually like acknowledging the fact that, oh my god, you guys care about each other. That's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like they both have their own individual reasons. Brooks, at the very least, Brooks is an individual that doesn't like feeling contained or constrained or in any way held down into something so he sort of tricks himself into this sense of being like oh well like i don't actually care about these people i'm just being caring because it puts me in that like it, it's manipulative and you know he he convinces himself he's doing it to have an upper hand in the situation because he doesn't want to openly admit to himself that he cares for people because if he cares for someone he can't just turn around and walk away yeah but like Looking at Brooks now, do you think Brooks would, at this point in time, be able to just get up and walk away? He likes to think that. Yeah, but like... <laughs> but no. Like, do I? When it gets down to it? I... Just, I'm just curious. Just genuinely curious. Me it too. depends on the scenario and how big it was. Like, it would have to be something really bad. Mm. But I don't think he could. Now, okay, but like, say for instance, uh, you get a letter. something from his backstory comes up, and you he's get a like, letter that's like directed to you specifically, offering you a large lump sum to come back home to do some kind of sh thing, like a lot of money. Would he, and just abandon a party and do that for the money? I, I actually don't know necessarily. I think it's something that Brooks would want to talk out with maybe one or two people. The problem is, is that, like, it depends. If nobody else knows about it, he probably wouldn't leave. Because he can just pretend, like, it, it didn't really happen. happen. Yeah, legit. So Whereas, no like, one has to know. Literal, no one has to literal know. Literal eight-year-old dude, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not about choosing the party. It's about he doesn't want anyone to be aware that he made that choice. He doesn't want people to know that he cares about them. Because he feels like that gives them... Leverage. Leverage, exactly. It gives them advantage over him. It gives them a position where they they are in control of the situation. And he doesn't like that. 
and as you're aware, in the past, that has not gone well for him. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, he didn't want to be involved in a group. And for a long time, he didn't really want to be attached to anyone. The closest that he had was at the Friendly Giant, but that was still something where he could just pick up his shit and leave. So this is the first time in a long time where he's actually felt somewhat tied into individuals, and it's a weird feeling for him because there's comfort in it, but there's also tension and paranoia and fear. Oh my god, these people care about the fact that I almost blew myself up? That's wild. It's, it's not... Yeah. There's a question about that, and I'll, I'll go more into detail about that, because that okay. that's more complicated than it, it seems. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Belle. Yeah. I'm gonna ask you the same question. Okay. Because, like, we, we know Kes cares about Brooks in some oddly childish way, almost. Right? <laughs> yeah. And again, there's a lot of things about Kes that seem oddly childish at, at a surface level. So that's, I guess that that's the theme, kind of. Yeah. D uh, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna rephrase the question so it's a little different. Okay. Um, if you look at the amount of care Kes has for Brooks, would she care as much as she does now if it were, say, Davian or Elazarin who did something so ridiculous or got stabbed? Oh. That's, that's an interesting... I... <laughs> don't think so. I think it's like okay. varying levels. She'd mm -hmm. be pissed at the same level if Daigon did something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like, it kind of like decreases depending on other people. And it's mostly because of like, it's like to her, it's 100% a case of, well, these people are more important because I can use them for, to my benefit more effectively than like these people because they don't really have anything I need. Is that genuinely the truth, or is no! it something that Kes tells herself? Obviously not. No, I was gonna say she's yeah. just an idiot. True, true, true. Okay, okay, okay. Alrighty, uh, we've got some questions, and I kind of just want to jump into those because we have a lot of them. Excellent. So we got Sassy who uh, submitted a bunch, and the first one's for me. Yo. Uh, what I like the most and the least about both of your characters. I'll start with Brooks. What I like the most <laughs> about Brooks is that he is his mindset is very much just get shit done no bullshit just get shit done like oh why are we waffling for hours and hours and hours let's just fucking He's let's just incapable. fucking do it let's just fucking he, do it he hates we'll he hates happens. that like brooks is an individual which he hates that sort of like prior discussion he doesn't care what the decision is he, he has voted before purely yeah, like, so that there just, isn't let's a split. just make a decision i don't care what the decision is let's just make one and just yeah. get going yeah like I, I i i appreciate that like that like mindset of we can sit here and waffle for hours or we can just fucking do it and we'll see what happens i don't know uh i don't know that's something that i uh fuck with but I like the least is his total lack of care or his total lack of understanding that he well he has the understanding i think but the the attitude he has when, for instance, he does something fucking dumb, like hold a grenade and wait for it to blow up, and his, like, incapability of reasoning with the party that are all vocally and visibly upset, <laughs> him just, like, not being able to, like, admit that, oh, yeah, maybe that was dumb. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, that pisses me off. Holy fuck. That's, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's designed to piss everyone off. Like, mm -hmm. fuck, it's, it's like equal parts pride and confusion. Pisses me off. Um, <laughs> and like that, that is one example, but that, that, just that whole attitude. Yeah, you know? he, he very much is like, I don't understand why you're questioning me. I made a decision. And I'm overall. fine. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Oh, dude, man. Um, as far as Kes goes, I think my favorite thing about Kes is that, like, childlike wonder she has yeah. about, like, everything. Everything that she, like, has no knowledge of is, like, the coolest thing ever to her. And, I don't know, I think that's very, I think that's very adorable. But also, it's just, it's fun to see you, like, roleplay that out and just kind of be this bubbly child. 
<laughs> it's I don't know. I, it's 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 it, it gives me a lot of like enjoyment and just like watching you roleplay that aspect of her. Uh, the least favorite thing. <laughs> trying to think because there's a couple of things she's that I'm like, a moron oh, but she's not though that's the thing um she pretends to be a moron <laughs> i think the, my least favorite thing about kes is that everything even if it's like something very minor especially when it comes to like interaction with the party has to just be like a joke or or a fucking like has to be wound up by like lies or or you know what i mean like that 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 lack of just being able to just for once in your fucking life be like yo so this thing is this thing and it's not like some like weird fucking like minor detail wrapped in a, a web of lies about you fucking stuffing chickens in a fucking <laughs> chicken. like god <laughs> Bro, like fucking fucking Davian can ask you, yo, Kes, did you uh did you have breakfast this morning? And you can go like, oh that reminds me of the time where I was in the Feywild and my mom fucking clapped her ass cheeks. Like who the fuck asked? Nobody. You know what I mean? Did you have breakfast this morning? I don't <laughs> like, know. Uh, don't get me wrong. Maybe I did, it's, maybe it's I funny, did. It. But like as far as like just like oh my god, dude. Nobody <laughs> fuck you know what I mean? Oh god. I feel like it's so fitting for Kes though. Like she never ever wants to answer a question. Like yeah, like just answer like, the she, fucking she question. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fuck me. Oh god. And like and that's not me say, telling either of you to like don't do that anymore, right? That's not what this is. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like if I no, had to, like, like you know what I mean? Like oh Taking fuck, any of them, yeah. They they're like they are complex characters. They're not designed to be all likable. So having Yeah, no, exactly. And I totally at get least it, favorite I part with is it, entirely you know, just if I had to pick something that I'm like and I'm trying to I put hate myself it. in the position of like, not as a DM, but like, if I had to roleplay with you, or if I were, were a living being in the world, and I would encounter two people like Kester Brooks, that, those would probably be aspects that I'm like, I would not vibe with at all. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that's that's probably, um... But yeah, I think that's, uh, that's that, 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 that would be my picks. But hey, uh, we've got another... 100-ish <laughs> sessions for character growth. I want to answer this question line. about all the party members now. I mean, yeah, we can do. <laughs> Yeah, Siren. put myself in Siren's mind and it's like, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's a, yeah. Like, for instance, if I were to roleplay Siren and be like, what would she not like about these two? And what would she like about these two? I can't know? wait to hear Siren's opinions on a Lazarin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, for both dum-dums, well, that's you two. <laughs> Thanks. That's you two. That's from Sassy. Um, you're not going to give each other a compliment because the world will literally break. I, um, you know what? I prepped for this, but I'm oh, not. Go on. Go on. Go no, on. no, it's fine. No, no, no. Give each other a compliment then, right now. All right, it's fuck itself. it. I didn't prepare. I, I <laughs> prepared. I was like, there's so many questions. I've got to prepare. I can bother a lot of shit. I know I do. I'll go on but she time. knows it's because I care about her. She's a great friend, a great editor, and a great player. And I'm very glad to have her in the campaign with us. Aww. And I will never verbally say this ever again, so make the most nice. of it. Record it if you have to. I mean, it'll be on YouTube, so. Yeah. I will have the VOD downloaded on one of my hard drives for like ever. <laughs> Never delete anything. Just clip it, like just on clip a deathbed. Just, just presses the button and it just plays that out. <laughs> uh, Alright, Bell. Oh. <laughs> Fuck, I thought I could get past this. Go on. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> Is it better if I like walk off camera so you don't have to feel no. like No! No! I'm trying to think I, of something. Is it better if I take my headset off? Like No! <laughs> oh fuck. Fuck. This is why I prepared. <clears throat> <laughs> You're really good at like running with a bit. <laughs> like really good at it. Like you can just run with it. I'm stupid. It happens it all the time. <laughs> it's great. It's why we vibe. <laughs> okay. We're just able to be stupid and improv. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I think it's the ADHD. <laughs> it probably <laughs> undiagnosed, but probably real ADHD. <laughs> the, we were talking about self-assessments. Say, go talk to your doctor go talk to soon. Your doctor. And I'm like, ah, it's nah, fine. You know, there's worse things in the world than ADHD. Whatever, dude. Um... I have worse things, <laughs> <laughs> like talking to your doctor. Yeah, exactly. For instance, um. What is a flaw of your character you hope you can use more in role-playing or enjoy using in role-play? Uh, Belle, you Ooh. can go first. Ooh. 
Kes has so many flaws, <laughs> and I love them. True. I think I think my favorite flaw of hers is this inability to see that she actually, as like an individual, matters. That's so deep. Wow, that's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> It like it, it creates so many fun, interesting like ways for her to behave and like discuss things <clears throat> that like wouldn't matter if she was as self obsessed and like egotistical as she presents herself. But basically, she doesn't think she matters, and like it's why she basically is so reckless because she doesn't she doesn't care. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. So like so she doesn't shit, she worry about works, anything. All the stuff she gives Brooke shit for. It's yeah. just projecting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She just she she's she has so many <laughs> so many issues, <laughs> and that's just like the one that kind of is is a bunch of trauma that's just piled on top of each other. That she's just like ah, I don't matter as an. One day, Kess is just gonna have a moment where she just like vents all of this trauma. Mm. It's just gonna be a twenty minute conversation. Just, like a, just by... a fucking trauma dump. <sighs> it's just everything all at once can finally stand up straight for the first time in 20 odd years. I can't wait I for like so the light. first time, like for like the next time where she hops in the vessel and Dashi's gonna ask her, so tell me how you really feel. And she's gonna be like this hour long monologue of like, oh God, well actually God, life fucking sucks. Everything is the worst. Like a week ago and you're dying and you're, you're you dying. Didn't even tell me. <laughs> My ask friends him if are he's all in the the person in the group that I probably care the, the, the is in the top two of, of uh, level of care for almost kill themselves and doesn't realize that's a fucking problem. <laughs> you know, it's just gonna fucking you're gonna waffle. Like she, she's just she's it's gonna it, there'll be a breaking point where she just can't take it anymore. Like you're but, gonna waffle for like an hour. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. <laughs> just gonna sit there. Just like, like I don't not know how breathe. To deal with this. <laughs> just sit in silence while she like rants. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like no, we're the like, worst. Just there with like a box of like crackers. Cause there's like there's so much stuff about uh -huh. like Kess that Dashu doesn't know. He has no fucking idea who Kess is, really. Like, <laughs> really? Look at it. like he's met he's said stuff and Kess is like, I'm I'm still thinking about that a few days later. Like I need to address this at some point, but like not today. <laughs> I'm guessing there's he's not getting around. a statue. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Posthumously um, awarded. Okay, Ethan, what's a flaw about be Brooks green. that you enjoy role playing and would like to use more? Uh, I mean, the obvious choice is Brooks' adrenaline junkie behavior, right? He's very. Yep. He doesn't like monotony. He doesn't like boring, both in and him, of himself and around him. He will make choices that maybe aren't the best choice because it's different because it's new because it's fun like i don't see him being like i'm gonna blow myself up with a grenade again because it went so well last time but there was just this like nickel of like i'll be fine right like i've seen what these do it'll be fun we'll see what happens um but i think there's a lot of like there are a lot of little flaws about brooks that like the party really haven't seen yet because he's got like these these walls up like like, the party have never really seen him, like, properly angry. Like, they've seen him pissed I can off. I can, you know what's funny? I can trigger that. I, I can trigger your Brooks getting so angry. I know you can, and you I also am. know what happened last time he was really, really angry, so... <laughs> like, it's, it, it, you it's know, funny which... to, like... All it takes is for me to make one executive decision, and Brooks is gonna have a fucking meltdown of another party, and it's just fucking funny to know that... All it is, 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 like... <laughs> Off the top of my head, it's like one person is somewhere, and he's like, I is don't it? talk to me, don't touch me. Leave me don't alone. even look in my direction. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> uh... he's, I think Brooks is very good at presenting this, like, persona of, like, I've got my, like, not I've got my shit together, but, like, I know what I'm doing, and I'm very in control of it, and even though I make those decisions, I'm the one making those decisions. Yeah, it's like, it's like you have that as like a shield over everything. And then Kess's version of that is, I don't know anything and I will just do anything on an impulse and nothing I think is relevant to anything. I just kind of like float around in my life and fuck around and do what I want. Yeah, I'm, I'm not looking forward to the party seeing Brooks angry, like actually angry. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe it'll be a good, I think, I feel like it would be a good thing. 
I'm excited. I feel like it would be therapeutic. You know why I think that would be a good thing? Because it's going to show the party that, oh, wait, he does care. Or he does have feelings. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's, I think it's going to show the party that, oh, Brooks is a whole ass person with feelings are, and emotions. There are definitely choices he's made that have been influenced by his feelings. He's just very good at pretending that they're not. Yeah. There are, like, decisions I've made in combat about Brooks' placement, for example, that have been impacted by who's around, who's getting hurt, and stuff like that, which is something that he'd never admit to. Like the monkeys? Yeah. Brooks, boonga, boonga. like an idiot, went and stood in the middle of three monkeys because A, he thinks he can tank it, and B, last time we fought anything like this, Kess got fucking destroyed and had a rock thrown at her head. <laughs> so now he's, he's like, okay, <laughs> she did. these guys will kill anyone else in the party. I need them to focus on me. Because, oh, again, really he, he crushed by a rock. thinks that he is fucking funny. maybe not the most adept, but definitely he thinks he's the most tanky member of the group. I mean, he is. He, was, he is. Like, the thing is, the thing about the thing about Brooks that he is the tankiest character, absolutely. But he, for some for some reason, he has this like illusion in his head that that makes him unkillable. You know yeah. I, mean? I think a lot of that is a lot of it is ego. Oh, absolutely. But a lot, a lot of it is I also. Think, a, I, think, a I think. I think. Like. I think. Like ninety percent of that is ego. <laughs> Maybe not 90%. There is like a third of it that is, I want the party to believe this. I don't want, like, like the fight with Dagon, like, part of him's like, I feel a little bad. That was brutal. But also part of him's like, no, I want the party to see that. Because if I want, like, if there's a point where I want to do something, I don't want the party to be like, no, we're going to stop you. <clears throat> I want them to think that's a bad idea. So he wants to sort of give off that idea of like, he's really fucking hard to kill. You know? All it takes was three big blood apes to get with an intelligence pool together less than yours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Brooks plays as if he's got an intelligence of six, so. Hmm. Okay. Um, what is the most fun combat so far, this campaign? Ooh. Start with you, Bell. Probably the, the, the big bad under the city in uh, Southwark. What was it called? South something. Southwold. So that's it. The, when we were Sai um, and stuff. Dragon Boy. Uh, yeah. Fucking, we got to the end uh, of that kind of like dungeon crawl and it was sick. Under the under the ninth ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. I'm trying to think of his that. fucking name. Fear Crack. Okay, Fear Crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, and, cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. It was just so much build up that it like was sick as hell. Uh, uh, uh it was the tenth ring, yeah, because there's nine rings of hell and tenth that ring. was yeah. the tenth ring, yeah. Yeah. Um or nine circles of hell, you know, same thing. Yeah, Vendetta and Fear Crack that we fucked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you, Ethan? Are you uh, in the same mind, or...? I mean, the meme answer would be Brooks blowing himself up. Uh, my, genuinely, course. my favorite combats, any of them that have lots of minions. <clears throat> because, like, one main target fights are generally more progressive of the storyline. But those, like, trash mob fights where you're just, like wading through and killing like two enemies a turn and just like brute like that's something i really enjoy out of character but also like for brooks it, it fuels that sensation of like i'm just gonna walk into a crowd of enemies and fucking obliterate them mm -hmm. plus i think that's when some of the best like brooks brooks like combat flavor comes out yeah but it's also the kind of nature of 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 being a barbarian I feel like you yeah. do really well. The same as like clerics or paladins, you know, oh, give me a fucking horde of undead and let me just fucking wipe them out in one fell swoop. It's fucking cool. Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> yeah. I feel like, I, I mean, that's true of most classes in the game. There are very few that are better on single target. Um, and that tends to be like very caster heavy. Like your martial classes are going to enjoy being in a group of multiple enemies, especially when you're getting more than one attack. Mm -hmm. 
because you can just like Dagon's the same. You put Dagon in a group of enemies, she can make like fucking four attacks. Yep. And you know, if they're all low health trash mobs, you're just beating the shit out of people and it's great fun. Yeah, no, fair, fair, fair. Uh I think mine is gonna answer even though it was directed at you two, I'm gonna answer to Sassy, go eat a dick. Um <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that fight in that like dragon burial ground not too long ago because I like fights that is that are more than just oh kill enemies. There's like you know there was this time constraint or just like oh they're sacrificing these cunts. Some fights that have just like a little more thought behind them of like oh uh, and there's definitely going to be more of that as we as we keep going. But like just fights that are more than just oh we got to kill things. It's like oh. We got to pick our targets. We got to make sure that we stop whatever's going on. Because if, you know, if we don't, something much worse is happening. Um, that, like, I I don't know. I like those fights a lot where it's like, yeah, you know, big-ass boss fights are cool and stuff like that. But, like, things that are... That have consequences if you execute it in the wrong order, for instance. Like, it's very cool. It's slightly tangential. But as a DM, I always really enjoyed throwing, like, moral fights at the party where, like, you're being attacked by, like possessed villagers that are people you know and are friends yeah. with and suddenly you're like well shit do i attack them do i not like yeah no that's definitely something that has always uh, the thing is it's kind of like so far i haven't done it but it's also because i really want to be like make sure that there's a good reason for that to happen and i feel like with this whole like the vibe of the campaign so far and just like the place you are i don't really think that fits very well in the I can't wait like, until we make a social faux pas in fucking Sekhthar and have to fight a bunch of snake people that we've been trading with. Fucking pissing it down all of a sudden, Jesus. It's fucking <laughs> raining, man. It's because we're talking about the jungle. Yeah, I guess yep. so. It's fucking monsoon, man. Yeah, like we're going to accidentally offend someone because like we, I don't know, brought our own cutlery or some well, weird like cultural tradition. Okay, that's the thing with like the whole Triton. I was like, dude, like this, if, if you guys fuck up or like do something next session that just like fucks them off you're gonna be in a position where you're like you're you're, you're fighting a, a community of people that aren't evil at all they're just like no, following they're just what their leader under. says they're doing and I'm, like you know if that happens i would be really curious to see like how would you handle that it's like what would you do i think that would be really interesting because everyone in the party is gonna have different opinions on it yeah I mean, we're, we're, not, we're, we're, not, we're gonna have a situation that Brooks hate the most, and it's gonna be like, oh, we're gonna talk about it first for an hour, and then decide yeah, what we do. Yeah, because <laughs> we as a group aren't like a good party, but we're not an evil party either. So suddenly, mm -hmm. it's so much more complex than just we don't kill them versus we kill them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Alrighty. Good uh, thing Brooks is not solely responsible for the party's actions while they're underwater or anything. True. I mean, you took that on yourself when you mentioned you were the blood of that shoe. Sorry. Yeah, I know. It was sick. <laughs> Good thing the other run. chaotic idiot is in charge. <laughs> <sighs> I can't be here this Sunday, guys. <laughs> or any Sundays ever. <laughs> I'm retiring. Then it's like cancelled. Thanks for watching. Um. What is your character currently most afraid of? Mm, we'll go with Ethan first. Um, I mean, consciously versus subconsciously is two very different things. Mm -hmm. Um, Brooks, maybe not his biggest overarching fear, but his biggest fear in the current moment mm -hmm. is this sort of like internal turmoil over do I actually care about these people if I do am I then putting myself in a position where I'm going to end up getting hurt again and that's his biggest fear at the moment is that he's going to admit that he does and therefore start working around that and then something's going to happen you know like mm -hmm. he's going to He's going to turn around after a Lazarin's big outburst and be like, you know what? I apologize. You're a good person. And then a Lazarin's going to get fucking like shanked by the saucy spider gang in his sleep. And Brooks is going to be like, well, I openly admitted I cared about someone and now they're dead. Brooks is just scared of feelings, I feel like. Brooke, 
Brooks is scared of feelings. <laughs> like, like all this boils like, down to Brooks is scared for the fact that he does care. He's he's scared to, he's scared of caring for people. He's yeah, scared which of obviously with your knowledge of him, you can understand why. Like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Yeah, I didn't give Dutch any backstory. I gave him like a, I gave him a post-it note that said, "He he, barbarian monk, go smash." It wasn't that even was a post-it note. It was a slice of American-style cheese with a sharpie. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> it works like a post-it note. You throw it at your wall, it sticks. <laughs> it's basically it inedible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Belle? What is, what is, what is Kess most afraid of? Um, she has two. Okay. Probably like subconsciously and consciously. Like I think consciously she's most afraid of now that she's not gonna get the chance to like have closure with her dad. Oh. Like she's really frustrated about that entire situation. Um it's and then mm, and then subconsciously she's terrified that she's gonna end up just watching this group of people die and be the only one left. Okay. Yeah. For a bunch of reasons that relate to backstory, I cannot tell, but like... Because she's a murderer. Yep. <clears throat> the last group of friends she had, she killed in their sleep. They ended up stranded on a desert island. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what's your character's favorite color and what did they think they would be when they grew up, when they were younger? Teal! And, and, and she didn't she... think she would be anything. And she didn't think she'd so be anything? She she thought she was just going to live in a village for the rest of, the, of her life and basically do nothing, because that's basically what her people do. Nothing. And she was just going to remain stationary for the, like her entire existence, which is why she left. That's so depressing. That is mm -hmm. really depressing. Yep. Also kind of a mood, though, like Loki. Yeah. Uh, Brooks' <laughs> favorite color is royal blue. Uh, and it's sort of... fuck. He thought yeah. he would grow up to be a blacksmith like his dad. A smithy? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. He was kind of right temporarily. For a little bit, yeah. for a little bit, yeah. you know. Looked for a couple and then they years had a tiff and, and he decided that he wanted to see more of the world. And he was that, like, ah, was, fuck off. You know, get as much distance as possible from a certain... I mean, no, he went to explore the world first. Mm. Then... That happened. Then he was like, I'm going to get as much distance as possible. Conveniently, both. it would occur. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, I mean, he moved out because he he had a tiff with his dad and he was like, you know what, fuck this shit. There's got to be more to life than blacksmithing. Which, in some ways, is really selfish based on why he was meant to be the one that, that runs it. Just a bit of a break, really. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil that. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll I mean, that's like, I mean, nah, Kess leaving. One day that, yeah. uh, the, that entire like smithy just got, got blown up and everybody's dead, and then got nothing to worry about. Your bitch ex happened to also be caught in a blast. Oh, look at that, beautiful. <laughs> what do you mean, ex? <clears throat> <clears throat> they were roommates. They, they were, oh my roommates. god, they were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were to some extent. Um, you joke, but like, one of Brooks's fears is like, oh, you know who was dabbling in powerful stuff? What if he made a mistake and just I get a letter? Lot. He's talking about about Voldemort, yeah. guys. Absolutely about Voldemort. Yep. Um, okay, uh, we got a question from Quaby. Everybody's favorite degenerate. Um, for Ethan. Is Brooks surprised that not only the group cares about him, but the two who seemed the most angry at him were Kess and Elazarin, or does he think it's some kind of trick? Ooh. <clears throat> That's two separate questions, because Elazarin and Kess are two very different answers. Uh -huh. From, like, a very surface level with both of them, he's not surprised because he would absolutely do the same. <laughs> what surprises him is that from both of them, it feels genuine and not just like a manipulative, like, like a, a sense of like, it doesn't feel like they're feigning care. It feels like it's genuine, which to him, like, 
It doesn't necessarily surprise him from Kess, but also sort of puts him in a position where he's like, so that's a thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Eladrin is more of a surprise that it's a genuine care, because it's the first time really that Eladrin has expressed any real... Anything other than like apathy really towards Brooks. It's a big word. Like, it's mean? the It's the first time that a Lazarin has shown that he like that Brooks isn't just someone that's also like in the same group, you know, like friend of a friend. Like Yep. <clears throat> apathy is like the absence of feeling. Yeah, it's like the I don't hate you, but I don't really care either way. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So for Lazarin, that sort of, like, throws him a little through the loop of, like, but why? I've not done anything for this man. You know? You know what's funny? Covered it so well with typing that one question out without any fucking typos. And now, the next one's gonna be full of spelling mistakes. And then there is... Is Kess worried that the group is getting more and more entangled into elemental politics and we in too deep? (laughs) I don't even think that's a spelling mistake. I think that's just... He just got lazy. Quote, we quote in too deep. Has we in too deep, fam. Like, he just, just got lazy towards the end of the writing there. It's like, ah, they'll yeah. do. Nah, we they will do. too deep. Um, I can't sing the rest of that. To answer the question, no. Kes is not worried about it. Well, okay, she... can, I, can I ask something like, yeah. real quick? Like, yeah. I don't think Kes has really realized that... Like, there is some elements of politics going on, yeah, but I don't think that realization is quite there of like how close to it you all like how in the center of it you all are i feel like yeah you know what i mean yeah there's a hundred percent that <laughs> she's like eh, we're like because like when you look at it from an objective like from a from a player perspective and a dm it's like you two like you as a group have a connection to big man of the air elementals big man of the fire elementals and i don't think you as a group but also Kess as a just as a as a person doesn't really realize how fucking like huge that is you know what i mean yeah i mean just like mentioning her dad's name at the Triton and then like her, their reaction of like oh like totally surprised her she just was like oh okay <laughs> this is great <laughs> this looks out wonderful for me but like <laughs> she just thought they'd be like oh okay like that, that makes you you a little bit more trustworthy you like come on with it the fact that he was like i will show you around personally and she's like oh no this yeah, is. I mean, it's a big deal mm. because yeah. they worship slash follow the elemental lord of water and you like, in a way are like heir to the throne as far as like leadership, you know what I mean? Because you are the, yeah. the, 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 you are not heir to the throne, that would be your dad technically, but uh, you are like not only granddaughter of the man in charge at the moment, but also daughter of one of the biggest, like, influential, um, what's the word? Diplomats the air and plane has to offer. Like, that's a big fucking deal. It explains her obsession with diplomatic you, immunity. Not only for you, but also for them. Yeah. So. It's, like, it, it, it's it's weird for Cass, because, like, she kind of feel is very used to having these big powers around her. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of just, it's very normal for her. Now there are a lot of them, and she's like, it's great, it's like a party, it's wonderful. But, like, <laughs> she is still struggling to grasp, like, that this is not normal. <laughs> and that this, this is very weird for, like, everyone else in the party. <laughs> so, like, any time like, anytime she brings it up, she's always, like, surprised. I mean, even just, like, Davian's uh, reticence to, like, accept the tears was like weird to her because she was like it's great what what could be the downside <laughs> it's like fab this I, I love it it's great i just talk to these people well, all the time like so far it's been positive but there's also a lot of like ways that could backfire like oh mm-hmm. you're the daughter yep. of this and this guy oh yeah okay we have we have a fucking bone to pick with him you're coming with us you know what i mean like there's a lot of like back like downsides to that as well yeah which she, I'm sure like at some point will will come up she 100% knew it was a risk mentioning, like, Dashu to the Triton. She was like, mm-hmm. oh, this could go badly. But she had no concept of how badly it could have gone. Yeah. Like, for all she was concerned, it would just be like, a, nah, get the fuck out. We don't want you here anymore. 
Like, she was thought that would be the worst that could possibly happen. Mm. And, like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so, like, their reaction, while positive <laughs> and bigger than she anticipated, has kind of, like, dinged a little bell in her head that's like, uh, what could have been the opposite of this reaction? <laughs> like, <laughs> but that doesn't mm. seem so great. I mean, yeah. so, like, she herself doesn't feel like she's in this net too, like, too deep. She's not tangled in it. And, like, oh, but she is. she's kind of thriving. But she it's is a, a little bit concerned that the other party members are in a bit too deep because they don't have the same safety nets that she does with, like, her bloodline. She's like, mm -hmm. mm. if it goes badly for them, it could go badly. Like, it could be... So she admits that she cares. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I mean, her deepest fear right now is that they die. <laughs> so, yeah. Damn. Yeah, I mean, shit. <clears throat> you know? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what backup characters are for. It's all good. True. 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 Um. Okay. We got a question. A couple questions from Soko. Uh, yeah. Are your characters worried about what will happen when the whole tier of Kasuth puzzle gets completed? Mm. When Daddy Again, gets no. that final tier? Again, no. Cass is like, she's just kind of basically like, this is great. This is going to only be a good thing. Like, there's been no bad side to this for me. So. Uh, hmm. I mean. He isn't necessarily worried about it, but it's definitely something that, like, he's keeping an eye on. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he does that with all of the party to an extent of, like, his sort of manipulative behavior is that he doesn't want to ever feel like someone in the party doesn't have a weakness or is, like, incredibly strong because he doesn't want to feel like, again, that he's in a disadvantage. Which is, A, full of ego, but B, like, very... I think it's also a bit of self-preservation, like, have it knowing who could potentially be a threat to you if it comes, yeah, if it falls down to it, you know what I mean? Um, I like, knowing that Daddy will become a whole lot stronger when he completes the whole Kosuth thing, I feel like, for Brooks, is something to be... Because, ba seemingly looking like he's unkillable and the strongest of the group is important to him. So I feel like on the flip side of that same coin, he would like to have a really good idea of the power level of everybody. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? Um, I mean, I'd always planned for Brooks to be like that because he is a con man. Like, his whole thing is that he's not going to play a game unless it's rigged in his favor. The party is the game and he wants to rig it such that he feels in control. Mm -hmm. And I always planned Brooks to be like that. And then maybe 10 15 episodes into the campaign i was doing a separate psychological like topic uh for something unrelated and i was like huh brooks's behavior in that aspect is like really similar to either domestic abuse survivors or like uh, assault survivors or post-traumatic stress it's that really heavy sense of like every situation he puts himself in he wants to feel like like he sits by the door we went to see the stallion and Brooks sits by the door because he knows where the door is. He knows where the out is. No one's going to be able to get to him before he can get out if he needs to. Mm -hmm. I think like it is very much a <clears throat> like, especially looking at your backstory. It's, it's, it's definitely more towards the like post-traumatic stress when it comes to like, yeah. I've been hurt before in this sense. And I'd rather die than have that happen to me again. Kind of like if I yeah it's, if I'm in a situation I'm in control or I'm not going to be in that situation, you know what I mean? Like that's the fully, that's it's, the way his brain kind of seems to function. It's on his terms or not at all. Which yeah, exactly. Makes him come across as really stubborn and arrogant at times, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just that he doesn't <laughs> want to admit that he's uncomfortable or that he's nervous. Yeah. Because that in that and on its own makes him look weaker than he wants to seem. Right? Yeah. Uh, follow up to that is: uh, Do any of you have? Do any of your characters have any issues that will potentially 
set them on edge about having yet another full, like, powerful being influencing the party. Yeah. I mean, this exact issue, like... Yeah. To some extent, everyone's fucking around. Apart from, apart from him and Daikin, everyone now is fucking around with some sort of, like, either magic or a two... Jax, I guess you could argue it's science and not magic from the way that he flavors everything, but it's still stuff science that is is magic that has you know like or what what is it that saying? Science is magic. And any any or science so... that is beyond comprehension is, is yeah, equivalent right, to magic. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like Jax is shit. Like Brooks understands the basic elements of the assembly because he has a blacksmithing background, but he doesn't understand the intricacies of it. And then mm -hmm. he's also got fucking. Kess and Dagon and Lazarin fucking around with shit that he's, you know, like he's aware that these creatures exist. He understands that the power can come from them, but he doesn't get like the intricacies of it, which means it's hard for him to assess. Mm -hmm. And while he's still convinced that, like, when Davian's picked this up and this influence, he's like, I could still, like, there are ways to deal with, even if Davian does become more powerful than I expect, like, there are weaknesses, everyone has weaknesses. But he doesn't have an understanding of, like, how involved are these other powers. Because, like, Kess, for example, if if Kess is in significant danger or not even that. Like, if Kess decides she wants something and, and the rest of the group say no, is Kess able to just be like, well, here's a uh, fucking air elemental. Get fucked. <laughs> you know, like, that's the bit that worries him is that he doesn't have an in-depth understanding of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I don't know whether or not that's something he's going to want to look into. Because he's not... Brooks isn't smart smart, but he's he's not stupid either. He likes to let street, everyone... He's got the street smart, yo. Even, like, mm. academically, he's not... You know, he's, he's about average intelligence for an adventurer, which is above average for a commoner. He's just he likes to give off the impression that he's stupid. He likes to give off the impression that he's an alcoholic. Oh, okay, well, look, look. There's being stupid and there's being dumb, right? Yeah. <clears throat> like, stupid and dumb, I feel like, are... I'm trying to listen to fucking, like, what Laura's calling out and I can't hear it. Oh, it was Ethan. Oh, that was me. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was me going. Um, I, I, I could tell. I'm so sorry. I wasn't fine. even uh, thinking it's about just like, it. It's like, I'm trying to think of like... Brooks... Isn't... Stupid. He no, just gives, Brooks is dumb. gives the illusion that he's stupid. But on the other hand, Brooks is dumb. You know what I mean? In a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, it's... In a lot it's... Of ways. He has the intelligence to understand scenarios but also is either blinded by ego or emotion or anxiousness in such a way that he allows himself to make what is dumb decisions or sometimes purely just because he'd rather make the fun decision rather than the smart decision and I feel like guess falls on the opposite end there I feel like like, whereas Brooks isn't stupid, but is dumb, I feel like Kes isn't dumb, but she's stupid. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that, as far as, like, what we've seen so far, Kes, Kes likes to portray to... herself as being very, like, dumb and, oh, I'm just stu dumb and I don't understand how things work. She knows. She's not dumb. But she is stupid in some of her decision making. You know what I mean? Like, there's very, yeah. like, I don't know. Kes it... portrays that she's got everything under control. But doesn't necessarily have the underlying understanding yeah. of certain, especially in social scenarios. I think that's where it's most prevalent. Yes. Compared to Brooks, who has like a very strong understanding, but then ignores that because he can. Mm -hmm. Cass, Cass is isn't dumb. Like she, she, she understands things to a greater extent than she allows people to think she does. Yeah, exactly. But. Her decisions are definitely underlined by a a reckless abandonment of which like any stupid. self selfish pres preservation or like anything yeah, is that isn't stupid. fun. So and it is, it's it. stupid. Yeah. Like she if she turned that off, she would be like a pretty intelligent person. 
but she just she gets bored too easily for her to just not decide to like fuck around and do the dumb thing it's where they're both very similar in that like they know Are the correct both? choice i just i think what i learned today is that you both piss me off you know yeah. <laughs> they both understand the correct decision but they both like are very easily it. bored and almost have that like childish God. like i'm done with this now let's do something else yeah hate it uh, I mean, I think I know the answer for you regarding this question, Belle, about like, oh, how does th th any issues with having another powerful being part of like the gang? And I feel like with Kess, Kess has like three on speed dial. I don't think <laughs> yeah. there's going to be an issue with there being a fourth involved in the party at any point. <laughs> nah, she's in regular communication with at least like just I... three. Fucking she regularly yeah. drops in and is like, hey, What's so up? I need this What's thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like she's <laughs> totally relaxed about it. She has no worries. She's like, "Oh, it's fine. This is how my life usually goes." <laughs> wow. It's like it's like when she was talking to Elazrin, and she was like, "What? You don't talk to your gods on a regular basis? Like <laughs> that's lame." No, <laughs> he was like, me. "Smile." Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I figured that would be <laughs> that would be the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, last question from. Our very own Laura K. Oops. For both of us, both in and out of character, what are you most nervous slash concerned for if we end up fighting the Ableth? Oh, um... I mean, out of character is very simple. <laughs> Brooks does not do well with mental saving throws. Oh, who are you most co nervous concerned for? Oh, my bad! Sorry! Oh, who? 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 Sorry. Who? Oh, Which body is most at risk? My bad. Misread that. I'm dumb. Do we See, think I'm both is, stupid and dumb. Which so. party member do we think is most at risk? Out of character, Brooks. Right. <laughs> Whichever one has the lowest intelligence modifier. I mean, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, like, we're all a fairly average, like, the mental group. Yeah. But. Think, to intelligence, Cass has a plus, like, zero, I think. I have a plus zero as well. I have a straight plus zero. I feel like if there's a charm effect that's... I, it's been a long time since I fought an Ableth. And I'm pretty sure they're saving throws. But if they are targeting... A never. <laughs> it has been 20-something <laughs> years since I fought an Ableth. <laughs> I am... Where did you, where yeah, did you, like, wait, where did you grow up? You had to fight fucking Ableths when you were like a wee bab. <laughs> north. <laughs> <Fair enough>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even grow up in the north. It's just funny. Um, north? No, like from what I remember of Abolith, there is uh, obviously this is, you know, Dutch might have changed shit, but I'm pretty sure that there's a, a, a charm, and I can't remember if the charm is just radius based or if it's targeted. But if it's radius based, Brooks has to be in melee. He cannot really function at range. And if it's targeted, I feel like he's probably the easiest and most beneficial person to target. Because he... From like a, a tactician point of view, you target one of the others and charm them. Yeah, they might output more damage, but they're going to go down quickly and then you just focus the Aboleth. If the Ableth is like, I'm going to charm Brooks, and then Brooks starts fucking with the casters. Like, that's... Uh, he's fairly hard to contain. And that makes me worry a lot that my turns are going to be spent figuring out which person I shank. Well, uh, I think that, like, well, uh, as far as Ableths go, their, their, like, mind control is definitely what makes them the most dangerous. Uh, funnily enough... If anybody gets charmed, they don't have to think about the turn at all, because I decide. Oh, because even Abileth, better. The Aboleth tells them what to do. Bro, I'm going to have so, my Switch charged for Sunday. So I can just, like... I, for instance, say Kes gets mind controlled by the Aboleth. I can just tell... Uh, I can just open Bell's character sheet and be like, okay, Aboleth, very fucking smart, will know exactly what, like, is the most dangerous thing that Kes has in her repertoire and use that against whoever the fuck the Aboleth thinks is the biggest threat. Like, I decide your turn. It's not one of those where you just, like, 
you choose your turn, but do it at, on, at, on a friend. Now, the Abolath is in complete control. The Abolath decides what you do and on who you do it. So. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm changing my switch up for Sunday because that combat's <laughs> going to be me sat in a corner like... Yeah, cool. Well, no, okay. you, that's good because you get to play Jax as well. So there you go. That's true. I do get <laughs> to play Jax. Whenever, so from an out of character point, Brooks get mind controlled. You just play Jax. It's fine. I would also be the most fair person to tag it because I have two characters. <laughs> also true. Uh, <laughs> it all works out. No, I, mean, I think what I'll do because Abolets are very smart. They are fucking. Abolets will make a decision based on. What I think what 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 will what'll end up happening is Abolets going to like just experience around and see who is like the. Who that round seemed to be the biggest threat, and that's going to be that's going to make the decision for him. Yeah. essentially. I feel like it's fully going to depend on when they use it and why. Like, if they're looking for a distraction, it's probably going to be like either Brooks or Jax. Maybe if they're looking for damage output, then it's probably going to be Kess. Or if they're looking to really disrupt our ability to heal, it would be a Lazarin. Like Kess is probably our biggest damage output. But if someone mind controls a Lazarin, like, we as a group are fucked. Yeah, fuck your dome, bitch. Yeah, no dome. Even worse, he that domes dome and gives like it to Abla. the biggest fucking defensive you all have, and it's insane. Yeah. It, it's, even if he rolls lowest on it, it's giving us an average, like, as a party, it's giving, like, 20 health a turn. Which yeah, is more than nuts. he could ever heal. Yeah, it's fucking insane. It's wild, which is why, like... Because not all, it's not any, a heal, it, but, it's a, it's a, but the fact that it's temporary temp HP hit point. makes it so fucking insane. With a barbarian as well. Like and doubles. so much of it as well, if the die the, if the die rolls, fail, rolls well. Like, yeah. it's fucking nuts. What's his max on it now? Is it 9? 10? 10? So 10 with Brooks it's, is 20. Wait, hold on. Uh, what is what is his subclass again? Uh, circle of... Uh, sorry, um, Cleric... Uh, Star Domain? No. Twilight. Twilight, Twilight. Domain, that's it. Twilight Domain Fucking Cleric. Fucking Robert Pattinson over look. here. Because that dome is ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's great. Uh, oh, crazy dome. Boom, 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 boom. character sheet, right? Where is it? Twilight Sanctuary uh, is what it's 1d6 called. 1d6 plus 4, so up to 10. Yeah, so 1d6 plus cleric level. So that shit's fucking nuts, man. Yeah, so... On it definitely, top, like, it's very OP, it seems, early It can level, end as it, Charm it, or Frightened. What? It can end Charm or Frightened. That's pretty fucking good. I didn't know that. Oh, I Elazarin's didn't suddenly a very big target. Yeah, Elazarin just became a very big target. <laughs> any, any, <laughs> any enemy... <laughs> any intelligent enemy is gonna see Elazarin as an incredibly difficult, like, target mm. now. And that's gonna um, wipe out our heals. So, yeah. Right now, oh. it's very OP, but I also feel like because the only scaling it gets is cleric level, mm. uh, it kind of like balances it trails out. Off. It, 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 it balances out, but also may fall flat when you get really high level a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you Because right like... now, 10 temp HP is fucking insane. If you're mm. level 15 and you all have like 70, 80 HP or whatever the fuck, uh, the max it's going to be able to do is it's like 20. 19, which is like, oh, whatever. You I, know mean, what I mean, like. Put it this way, like. Brooks at level four has forty-four hit points. Yeah, Brooks so, also. You've also had really good rolls though, and you're yeah, uh, I yeah, um, like your three had, bar. I think one, I had one. Your three bar, one monk, right? I'm three monk, one barb. Oh fuck, you're right. But monk is a D10. I have plus three on con. Monk is a D8, I think. Yeah, eight, Five, eight, eight, six. So your max HP would have been D12 for the barb. Yeah. Eight, six, twenty-four. So that is uh, 36 plus 12 for your con. So your max would have been 48. 48. So you being at 44 is fucking insane. Yeah. I guess that's it's, nuts. I'm, trust that me, it's not going to last. You're, you're missing four, four potential hit points from being maxed. Is it maxed. a D8 for Monk? Well, Laura it's says a D8 it's D8 for Monk, right? Like, yeah, yeah I, th I mean, I believe it. I'm not sure, but uh, Laura says it's a D8 as well, so surely she'll know. Yeah. Uh, um, so like you're literally four I, from I took, your, your max HP is four under what you could max have at this level, which is nutty. <laughs> like yeah, because I I took barbarian first, which gave me plus max it, fifteen starting. Yeah, so I've only had to roll like I think I rolled like an eight, a fucking six and a six or like a six. Yeah, seven, like that's seven. that's fucking nutty. Like you've had insane fucking health rolls. Um, 
So it's yeah, not going to last. I think but... what I'll say about the fight, uh, I think, like, do you have genuine reason to worry? Yeah, you're going. To, that's going to be your level up fight. It's going to be fucking hard, and it's going to be a challenging encounter. Um, but it's definitely designed so that you can win it. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not one yeah, of those cool. fights where you know. I mean, like, I want you guys to fight it because I want you guys to win because it's your end of story arc uh, level up fight essentially yeah um so it's gonna be hard and yeah motherfuckers might go down uh and the potential to die is there if the dice really decide to fuck you but it's uh, yeah. it's a very winnable fight it, it, all things considered you know what i mean yeah like, yeah i i'm not too worried about it I think it'll be difficult, but I don't think. Yeah, like it's definitely designed to be a difficult fight and a long fight as well. It's designed to be yeah. a very mm -hmm. long lasting fight. Uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you take like an hour to get there Sunday and then three hours will just be fighting the cunt. Fighting. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. at all. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's going to be fucking good. It's going to be good, man. Like, I. I, I it's, it's not your average, like, Abeleth. I've definitely made some changes and, That's and stuff. Good to know. Because of the because of several reasons. Um, one, if I would face you against the base Abalath right now, you would all fucking die. <laughs> like genuinely, you would have all you would all fucking die. Yeah. If I use yep. a normal vanilla Abalath and you and min max the use of its abilities, you're all fucking dead in like three turns, right? So, <laughs> but um, the biggest threat about this fight is not going to be the Abeleth. It's the fact that you're in his turf. The lair is going to be oh. a big oh, impactor no. of the the way the fight's going to go down. Anyone got any teleports? This is going to be this is going to be the biggest like uh, the most challenging like lair you've ever fought in, both in campaign one and campaign two combined. <laughs> That's Yay. uh worrying. <laughs> That's my favorite. I <laughs> I love that. Out of character, <laughs> I'm like I have that knowledge of like Dutch isn't gonna put us in an impossible fight unless he's gonna make it clear and it's an impossible fight and like you guys need to get the fuck out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. So like I know that like it's plausible out of character. In character Oh This doesn't feel good. No. It shouldn't feel good. <laughs> Like, you know I mean? this really don't feel good. Especially, like, you've got this whole, like, dynamic of, like, a couple of members of the party who have finally admitted they care about each other. Then you're going in to fight something horrific. Like, that's it's definitely going to be a playing. more perfect time to kill somebody. Not even killing someone, but, like... Taking someone killing. down. I can't speak for everyone, you. but, like, I could speak for the fact all. that... Like, I can't speak for everyone. I could speak for the fact that Brooks could quite easily be baited into stupid decisions in this fight based on what happens in any fight motherfucker that's just <laughs> brooks doing brooks things. don't pretend like that's just gonna be this fight you little fucking liar i see i pierce through your veil of lies when i say stupid decisions i don't just mean being like huh it'll be funny if i do this i mean like actual like emotional decisions those are the worst ones Brooks oh, makes. Why did you fucking sound French for a second? Those are the worst ones. Those are the worst ones. Those are the worst ones makes. We are playing the D&D, you know? Oh, by the way, guys, I want you all to DM Vincent right now because it's his birthday today. Wish Vincent happy birthday. Yo. I'll do it on stream. Big up my boy, Sai. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think as far as, I think, general consensus about, like, who is the biggest, who is at risk. At last room. Probably. Mm. I'll happily admit if, that. If, 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 if an Aboleth <laughs> is smart enough to know what we can all do, and notice that he can heal. Yeah, I mean, the base intelligence of an Aboleth is 18, man. He's fucking, Aboleth smart, man. <laughs> or even, like, even but if, Kevin like, Aboleth... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> well, oh. currently uh, in casting for the new Batman movie is Two Face. <laughs> Hang on, let me get a fucking stroke, dude. Let me get. Let me get. A, let me get a screenshot of this. <laughs> I 
that's fucking amazing. Oh, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> Fuck. <clears throat> All right, let me pull up Photoshop. I've got something to work on after this. <laughs> oh my god, that's oh, beautiful. Fuck me. Uh, Belle? Hello. Hey, there she Hello, is. she's back. <laughs> the face you froze on, Belle, was... Yeah, I know, I saw magnificent. it. Magnificent. Thank you. Magnificent. Mm -hmm. um... <laughs> 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 All right. Um, god, I hate uh, Discord. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta check out zoom at some point and just give it a try you know give it a trial okay zuma i mean you can only zoom meetings end after an hour if you don't no, pay for because it because laura has the like business version of zoom oh yeah well she said and that does not have a an hour limit and denny mm -hmm. uses zoom for uh dicely that campaign and uh, because discord has been shitting bed lately so much yeah. i'm worth I mean, giving the giving other zoom option try. is to Give it, I mean, give, just, just give it a try for it for a week and see if we notice a, a significant increase in quality and less fucking less um, desync. I think desync is the biggest issue with this guy at the moment. There's just so yeah. many times where like cameras go in and out of sync for no fucking reason at all. It pisses me off. So Discourse it happens significantly less. But I, I think, think it's a bandwidth us. issue. But... I think that's because there's just like a smaller group of people, only three cameras, so like fine. But DS. Yeah. Gang's all here. Seven webcams. Discord does not like it, man. Seven webcams that are all reasonably high quality as well. Yeah. It's Discord's a lot of like, data. Nah, I'm good, fam. And the only other thing was like this. There was a long... Like, campaign one, we never had issues like that. And then me Discord. and Bell got fancy cameras. True. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> Don't um, worry. If I if I win the lottery, the first thing I'm buying is I'm getting everything. Oh, speaking of lottery, dude. Cameras. Three days, and I'll be a millionaire. Motherfuckers. Maybe. Um, yeah. <laughs> no fucking shot. You are no millions. <laughs> no fucking shot, but you know, hey, we have a lottery ticket, dab. Um, I mean... It's a bigger chance to get eaten by a shark than to win the lottery, guys. Um, I don't know how those I... numbers work, but that's like something I always hear. It's like, oh, there's a bigger chance you get eaten by a shark. Like, motherfucker, I don't Not on dry land, you dumb bitches, I don't but... go to the fucking beach ever, and I don't go to... I hate the ocean. I'm not gonna get eaten by a shark, okay? If you don't go to the Shut ocean, up. there is absolutely a bigger chance of you winning the lottery right? than getting eaten by a shark. <laughs> um, anyway, as we always do with this course, we end off on a little bit of a teaser for, uh, for the next um, session. And I think I've already kind of said it. I think... Uh, Lazarin's well, gonna die! No, I think... I think <laughs> the biggest die. threat... Finally! Of, the biggest threat of your upcoming encounter is not the Aboleth itself, it is the realm he calls home. His lair. Excellent. is going to have a big impact on the flow of things. Oh, Love great. that. You're gonna oh, really... Shit. Underwater fighting. Yeah. Ooh. Underwater fighting in a Aboleth lair. That's just... Man. Um, but who knows? You know, we'll see. I hate it. <laughs> uh, and with that, I want to thank you both for being here. This was a fun sesh. A lot of questions. More of that, please, guys. Yeah. Submit all the fucking questions. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Shatter and Beanie, thanks for the subby webbies. Nine months. Foggy's boob. Uh, we'll be back here on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. With uh, the next dungeon select. And probably a character level up if things go well. Yo! Possibly a character death if things Possibly don't. a character death or two. Um, I get... <laughs> we'll see you on Sunday. Okay. Take care. Stay safe. And this will be on YouTube or whenever. Soon, TM. Soon. Uh, Saturday. There you go. Saturday. Peace out, gang. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Du -du -du -dum. Bom, bom, bom. You gone? Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Du -du 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 -dum. And now slowly like fade out. Just like. Bum, bum.